Joe Budden fires back at Scotty Beam. And I think some of the bitterness from, from Shorty comes from whatever transpired during our time at Revolt. But one, I fired you. I'm sick of good, black, successful men getting their backs kicked in by you people that just read shit and say it, which was the downfall that it happened already and it's over with. Like, we should be past that. I don't speak on you in an ill manner. I would expect to not be spoken about in an ill manner. Nepotism aside, a nepotism aside, you've been put in position plenty of times to succeed and make your voice impactful outside of a Twitter or X upload. I refuse to have my back kicked in by somebody who couldn't walk in a fucking heel when we worked together. That's right. On episode 711 of the Joe Budden podcast, Joe Budden had enough of Scotty Beam speaking on him and decided to pop the trunk on his former bestie. For those of you that don't know, Joe Budden and Scotty Beam have had an interesting relationship filled with ups and downs. Well, now it's mostly filled with downs. As a result of Scotty Beam's tweet calling out Joe Budden for not commenting on the Diddy situation. Well, now Joe Budden seems fed up as he went on the podcast and said, who is Scotty Beam to call him out after he had done so much for her in the industry? And he started to get real personal, outlining how he did so much to help her succeed at State of the Culture and said she never wore any pumps or any heels until she got to stay in the culture now that might seem simple but that's a big diss to a girl I, I would imagine hey you ain't wearing no pumps or heels until i met you it was like a big shot and he even says that she was insecure because he was lacing her with the best fashion and she felt uncomfortable i would imagine that this is probably a reference to their time together and maybe now maybe Scotty Beam told him that she didn't feel comfortable wearing the attire. I guess he wanted her to wear. That's just a guess. And man, this got real crazy because then Joe accuses her of nepotism. And I was like, because I know the science, I know that's a big dig on Scotty as her mom is a former radio host in New York City, a big time radio host. And many have thought that Scotty was able to eat off of the lineage and that is why she got put into so many places to succeed you know hot 97 netflix with the rhythm and flow after show she used to do and joe budden but i would say joe didn't you play into that nepotism by offering her chance after chance i mean she was on the pull-up she was on state of the culture you even tried to recruit her for everyday struggle so, I mean, maybe you were complicit. Maybe you were the one trying to feed her opportunities because of what her previous lineage was. I must say, I you know, Joe was really ruthless. Joe basically called out Scotty Beam as someone who lacks any real experiences and may be a failure based on her previous track record of not doing much in the industry now it's a theme i've explored in my videos you know i've said why isn't scotty beam you know more of a mainstay in hip-hop media she was on hot 97 she was on state of the culture it seems like everybody is trying to make it happen and what joe budden outlined might be a reason maybe she doesn't develop her own opinions and goals with the twitter talking points but then again, maybe Joe was just being colorful. I'm sure he would accuse me of the same thing he accuses Scotty Beeb of. But let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think will happen next? Will Scotty Beam fire back? I would assume you have to fire back, bro. I would assume after what you said about the Diddy tweets, after what you've been saying about him for years, you got you to gotta shoot back. You need to do a blog. If you ain't going to do an interview with the stop, I would say... Go to WTF Media. Hey, go to Full Court Studios too. Don't use Studio B. Have the camera cut on. Talk about your relationship with Joe. Talk about how he made you wear them high heels and he he had you acting out of character. This is what you got to do now. Pod Wars are here. This is how it goes. You was laying off those tweets and now we've arrived at the moment that you've been waiting for, Scotty. This is 
a big moment for you. This could be what unlocks a serious runway for your career. Seize the opportunity. Don't do none of that Hillary Clinton, when they go low, we go high mess. You send them tweets. Joe Budden responded, and it's time. Now, I wanted to address something. You know, some people been making fun of my voice, but Danny, you sound real nasally. Well, I'm sick because the content don't stop because I'm sick. I was listening to Ramsey the other day on, on some show, and he said, yo, even if you sick, show up. So I'm sick, and I'm showing up. A lot of you guys in the comments talking about my voice and there's my voice that I don't care. You can't be listening to people. You can't be, you know, this is, let this be a lesson to all of you. No matter your insecurities, no matter what you think other people think, you show up. When Joe Budden was on his podcast, you know, doing that weird car engine laugh that he did and people said he sounded stupid, he showed up. That's what I'm doing. All right. Some of you people making fun of the way I operate, how I look. Now you got an avatar and I can't even roast you the way I want to. It ain't right. And now you're going to say, oh, Danny, but you used to do the same. When did I make fun of how anyone looked? Not that I mind it. Hey, if, you, if that's how you want to get your rocks off, get it off. But if you're going to roast me, I got to need I need more information on you. Put your profile pic. But don't worry. I'm well aware that most of it is love 90 percent of it there's only like five percent hate and then like maybe 10 to 20 percent constructive feedback and then the rest is all love so everybody it's all love i just wanted to get at that but that's my video for now i'm probably going to be doing another video about joe budden breaking down to see the thing is break up uh like comment subscribe we just hit twenty thousand subscribers Oh my God, I got to tell you, when I hit 10,000 subscribers, I had no clue that the next 10,000 would come so fast. When I first started my channel and I was doing really good views, I'm talking about 20,000 views for a channel with like 800 subscribers. There was people like, oh, you ain't got no subs. Even people with big platforms, you know, these platforms that you compare me to, making fun of how many subs I got, but I didn't care because... I knew subs, they matter, but they don't matter to the extent that people were trying to make them matter in order to shoot at me. And now I'm at 20,000 and the work doesn't stop, right? At a certain point, I will have to stop celebrating these 10,000 subscriber increments and maybe one day we'll get to 100K. But one thing I can guarantee you, whether I'm at 300 subs, 3,000 subs, 30,000 subs, we're still going to do the science, we're still going to talk about the topics these podcasters are avoiding, and we're going to get to the bottom of everything. There's a reason this platform is resonating with people, and they're going to say it's because I'm reaching, but no, it's because I'm actually forcing a discussion about these topics that the podcasters are hiding, that are hiding in plain sight, right? Mandy said, um, I asked a question. And she knew what I was doing with the question. Well, what I was doing with the question, I was seeking clarity when I asked, is Bridget lazy? Because what you were saying indicated to me that you thought Bridget was lazy. But that's an example of the type of questions that need to be asked at all times. And that's why this platform exists. And that's why I blog even when I'm sick, because we got to do the science. All right, y'all. Follow me on Instagram, The Stop TV. Follow me on Twitter, The Stop TV. This is Danny from The Stop. Peace. Oh.